So please give a warm welcome to the amazing Tony Giordano. Thank you. Thank you. Can you do this? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, is it a different day and age? We have moved online as human beings. There is no question. That is our new house, in all honesty. We're not home anymore to answer the door from door knockers. Heck, my heart skips a beat when I hear my front door get a knock on it. Who's, who's here? Why didn't they, why did they come unannounced? Last thing I want to do is talk to a realtor, right? We're not home to answer our hardline phones for co callers. Over half the world's population is under the age of 30. Do you want to know what they do with your postcards in the mailbox? They go through their mail, they grab the white envelopes, they stick them under one armpit, and then they grab all the things with color, they stick it under the under armpit, and then they walk into their kitchen and let those go in the trash. It's what I do, anyways. So when you look at this title, Online presence versus present online. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back in time, 10 years. If you wanted to have presence in your market, if you really wanted to just color that area with your brand and be the dominant market shareholder, what would you have had to do? Spend a lot of money, right? Advertise in every magazine, billboards, park benches, every single newspaper. And you, if you were willing to do that, would have had what I call, let's say my area, Malibu presence when 95% of your competition was just present in Malibu. That's what online presence is, is knowing the difference. Having presence, not just being present, we're all online but do you have presence, relevance? Are you active on all the networks? Now I wanna share something with you and I'm glad you're all sitting down. What happened to the travel industry in the early to mid 2000s? Bye bye. Because what website was launched? Expedia.com, remember that? What they did is they just became such a massive website for travel that unless you were a travel agent and a travel company willing to go online and be a source for them, you were left in the dust because you weren't as accessible anymore. Well, the founder of that company said, oops, didn't mean to do that, sorry, just wanted to give consumers access. So he decided to do it in the video industry, same guy, and take out the video store who wasn't willing to go online and be a source for people. So what other company do you think he founded? Netflix. And here came the giant blockbuster crashing finally last year because it just can't compete because it's not willing to go online at a high level. Well, the founder of those two companies is named Rich Barton. Sound familiar? He's the founder of Zillow. I'll let you all take a minute. <laughs> Fortunately, we're not going anywhere as real estate agents. But what he's doing is he gave the consumers access. The MLS is no longer the holy land. That's for sure. You don't need a realtor to access it anymore. Most consumers don't even use their realtor's website to search for properties. Now with KW, we're constantly changing for the better and adapting the smartphone apps and giving our clients consumer access. However, unless you're really willing to go online and be a true source, advertise on Zillow, advertise on the Giants, get the leads, then look in your rearview mirror. Because the generation that is, is changing the industry forever. So how do we do it, ladies and gentlemen? How do we truly have online presence? Your personal Facebook. Facebook is the king. They're not going anywhere. They're the giant, and I'll give you a billion and a half reasons why. But what are you doing on Facebook? Are you over it? Are you just getting into it? 
Number one new demographic signing up to Facebook every day, senior citizens. Grandma's finally getting to see the pictures of the grandkids. No more Polaroids being sent through the mail to put on your refrigerator with a magnet. Mom, Dad, get a Facebook. Number one new demographic signing up to Twitter, senior citizens, because they want their news. So we're going to spend some quality time on Facebook because it truly is relationship building and brand awareness. And then I'll just hit a little bit of points for the other six big networks. But for right now, a digital relationship is 100 times more powerful than a real life relationship in the same period of time. What on earth are you talking about, Tony? You're telling me a friend on Facebook is more of a powerful relationship than somebody I know in person in the same period of time. Let's go back in time. 15 years ago, I walk into Starbucks, see a friend of mine. Tony, coincidence, this is Jennifer. Jennifer's going to be buying a house soon. Oh, here, nice to meet you. Here's my card. Yeah, I'm probably a couple months away, Tony. Well, anyways, nice to meet you. I'll be in touch. Thanks for introducing us, John. And then a week goes by. Maybe she's on MLS auto prospecting now. I followed up with a couple emails doing my touch campaign. In three weeks, how much does Jennifer know about me? Nothing. I'm the realtor trying to capture her business, and we happen to have a mutual friend named John. I'm one afternoon away from her walking into an open house, befriending the listing agent, listing agent saying, you can get a better deal if you use me. And her thinking, well, I don't really know Tony. Who is he again? That happens still to this day. But now enter exhibit A, Facebook. I meet Jennifer, change my card, give her my information, go out to my car, pull up John's friend list on Facebook, because I'm friends with John, go to his Jennifer's, there's three Jennifer's, there's the one that I just met, and hit add as friend. When the lead is boiling hot, not in two weeks when it's cooled off. She accepts my friend request. The ROI and the chance of that is so high at that point. We just shook hands. We met at Starbucks. She sees that we have four other mutual friends, and we're both Laker fans. I'm not a Laker fan, by the way. Just use them. You see where it's going? Now in three weeks, how much does Jennifer know about me? Everything. That we're willing to share, at least, right? She knows everything. And now in three weeks, we've built such a tight bond that I got her. Our kids go to the same school. I said happy birthday to her. I was one of five people that liked a photo of her kindergarten graduation. She's hooked because our relationship online is building a bond, and we know how we have six degrees of separation now. Heck, Facebook made, it, made us all realize there's one degree of separation. So what do you do? Who is this guy? He's my digital twin. He's actually the good twin. <laughs> Think about that. He doesn't swear, doesn't take sides, doesn't go on political rants, doesn't get into arguments, doesn't sleep. He's on point 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. He posts something in the morning, and somebody sees it at 6 o'clock at night and starts talking to him. He's the good twin. He only checks into the Encore and Wind Resort in Las Vegas. I'm the one checking into the nightclub below the Wind and Encore in Las Vegas. I'm actually the bad twin. Maybe I express myself a different way with my close friends and family in an intimate setting. So once you realize the power of these digital relationships, once you realize that he can be whoever you want her or him to be, then it is truly leverage. In 2010, after losing everything in 2008 as a mortgage loan officer, I switched to the sales side in 2009. By the end of 2010, I was speaking nationally for a company, all because of how much business I was getting from Facebook. This business was just because I changed the approach and I started saying happy birthday to total strangers, who then all of a sudden started to like my posts who never liked my post before, but now the communication is two-way. They realize that the bond is there. It's a true relationship. It's not one way. And that's what happened. So I wanted to be a luxury agent. 
So guess what my good twin was? A luxury agent. Spoke about foreign money, pouring into the US, would go on caravan and take pictures of $20 million houses on Carbon Beach in Malibu. New listing everybody, look at the infinity pool. Price to move, <laughs> 20 mil. Let me know if you'd like to see it. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you told the agent who had it listed, hey, I'm gonna post something. I have a lot of buyers on my Facebook. Do you really think they're gonna say no? And that good twin seemed like he knew what he was doing and that's where the referrals started to come in. Make sure you approach it this way, everyone, and be social on your personal Facebook. Think photo from this point on. I'm gonna run through this because we don't have a lot of time. The algorithm for photo tracking online is incredible. If I have 10 of my friends like one photo of mine, of a listing on my personal Facebook, and the average person on Facebook has 300 friends, 3,000 potential people see this. Because your friends are alerted when you take an action on Facebook. London liked Tony's photo. Oh, why did London like Tony's photo? Oh, wow, cool, look, that's, I'm not friends with Tony, maybe I'll add Tony as a friend. Imagine your for sale sign in that picture, MLS violation. Not on Facebook. So I have my photographer take a picture of properties with the sign and without the sign for the sake of this. Think photo, not MLS links, not websites. Facebook business page, powerful for brand awareness, and that's it. For building your brand and demographically targeting whoever you want in the world. Now this is in my listing presentation. The people who are starting to change their language and talk this way will get any listing over anybody anytime because sellers are unaware of it, like some of you today might be. But I can go on Facebook and post something with incredible value, great information. I can then, once I post it, click the little right button on the right-hand corner that says boost post. Now when you boost a post, it pulls up that window to the right. Audience number one, people who like your page and their friends will see this post in their newsfeed, even if they don't follow my page. But audience number two, people I choose through targeting. And if you know about this and you've done it, awesome. But there's even a further rabbit hole climb down where there becomes an art to it a language to it, know who you're talking to. But the fact that I could post my client's listing in Malibu on the water, knowing that Saudi Arabians are purchasing Malibu beachfront like crazy, vacation leases, everything, and I can tell my clients, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna post your house, we're gonna go to a demographic who say they live in Saudi Arabia, who are over the age of 45 years old, who took the time to like Malibu on Facebook. And this is gonna go into their news feed on Facebook. And for $200 or $60 or whatever you wanna spend, it literally will say right then and there, this is about ready to go out to 6,800 Saudi Arabians who are over the age of 45 who have taken the time to show interest in Malibu. Would you say that that's pretty powerful to tell a seller, yes or yes? See, when you change the way you look at things, what do we teach in bold? The things you look at will change. So Facebook, I wanted to spend time on for that reason alone, is your personal Facebook is the social network, building relationships for referrals. Your business page is brand awareness and demographic targeting and using it in your listing presentation. There's no other way somebody can compete if they don't know how to demographically target online. And there's no other way to demographically target in magazines unless you're going after a certain demographic magazine like Equestrian. That's what we used to have to do. So here's what I wanna share with you. I want you all to start talking this way. How many would you agree that you're on a listing presentation the day you meet a homeowner at a table of friends and you find out that they own a home? That's your listing presentation, just so you know. Not when they call you in a year. Because when they call you in a year, it's because what you said at that dinner table that stayed in their mind. 
when they said, oh, you're a realtor? How's the market? It's pretty crazy. 95% of your competition stop right there. But then you say it's pretty crazy. You know what's even crazier? How I can move property online and put a listing of my clients in front of a demographic in another country who have shown interest in that city? They're like, what? I thought Facebook was friends and tagging photos in Vegas. No, let me show you this. Powerful stuff, so start doing it. But now I'm gonna move on. And I'm going to go into what these other networks are, the Magnificent Seven, I call them. So Facebook is the social network. Twitter, it's the news network. That's their niche. On Twitter, here's what to do and here's what not to do. Follow what's important to you only. Do not follow a thousand things, two thousand things, so that you try to get those followers back. I don't care if your ratio isn't as good as Kim Kardashian's, where it's 30 million followers and she's only following a hundred. But if you're following 10 and you have 300 followers, you have the same ratio. It's about what's important to you. So as a real estate agent, you want to follow CNBC, CNN, Fox News. You want to follow Zillow. You want to follow Keller Williams. You want to follow both sides of the politics so nobody knows what you are because you don't take sides online because you don't want to lose half your audience, right? So those are the things to follow so that you can see in your feed and it's not weighed down by a bunch of other things that you really didn't have interest in. But Twitter is to get discovered and to discover information. And I can't spend a lot of time on it, but any of you today could go onto Twitter any of you could be a realtor in Malibu, and any of you could go to the top search bar of Twitter and put, just got accepted to Pepperdine. And it will pull up every single 17-year-old 17, 17 in the world who has tweeted those words. What was that, Tony? Oh, yeah. Why do I want to know that? Because I can reply to any of those 17-year-olds. And I can say, congratulations, hashtag Pepperdine. Go Waves, give mom and dad my website, local expert on housing. Why would I want to do that? What do Pepperdine parents have? What do they not have? Time. I'm going to find them. I'm not going to wait for my phone to ring. And they see my website. It looks good. They already told their son that they're buying a million dollar condo so he doesn't have to go in a dorm. I see it done so many times. So I'm finding them, I'm not waiting for them to come into town and hope that I'm one of the agents that they went on a listing and befriended. Twitter is extremely powerful. Instagram. Instagram is the photo network. That's their niche. You have to express yourself with photo and you have to be into photography, otherwise you're not gonna enjoy it. So here's how to know if you should do Instagram. You and a friend are taking photos of the same thing group of people, and you go, okay, click, here's your phone. And your friend is like, all right, move, no, 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 right there, yep, wait, uh, okay, click. He belongs on Instagram, you don't. <laughs> His shot doesn't have the power line in the way of the sunset, yours does. So you have to be into it, but it's a marketing giant, and there's a reason why Facebook purchased them. Pinterest, fantasy football for women. <laughs> Sorry. Just a few months ago, it was 87% women. Now it's only 60-something. So it is changing, and it is a marketing giant, and it is the interest network, plain and simple. LinkedIn is the professionals network. What to do on LinkedIn? Complete your resume. It is the modern day resume. Have your profile complete. Join private groups like Global Real Estate Network, China Real Estate Network. Join your university's official alumni group. You wanna talk about power? Those official alumni groups on LinkedIn are extremely powerful networks of people. That's how you do LinkedIn. What not to do on LinkedIn? Endorse your competition. What are you doing? 
Do not endorse your local competition. Endorse an agent in New York or Florida or wherever, but don't endorse your local competition. I know you're supporting your colleague. Don't lose sleep at night. Just don't do it. YouTube is the video network. You have to launch your YouTube channel and listen to these panelists. Listen to the people today who are talking about video marketing. And then there's Google+. Oh, poor Google. Just couldn't figure out that niche. Well, they finally did. And it's the SEO network. You have to be active on a Google+, Plus if you want to show up in results on Google now. That's a fact. And they're even saying that in press releases. So adapt with these networks. Be active on these networks. And at the end of the day, because we're out of time, and I can talk for three hours on all of these networks, each, and train people on them. But we live in a new world, and it's social media and it's online presence, not present online. Somebody recently asked me, Tony, what do you think about Social Security? And I said, I think having a Facebook is really important. Right? Thank you, everybody, very much. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Awesome.